In this video, we are going to dive into two separate Mexican sinkholes, also known as cenotes. We're also gonna spend some time at the beach and check into a new Airbnb. Let's get started. Feeling pretty alive this morning. Beautiful sunrise coming over the trees and cenotes ahead. This? No, no. Stay under, stay under. Am I under? Three. Okay. It's gonna be horrible. One, two, three. Okay. Ah! Okay, it's gone. It's really gone. Oh. <laughs> Boy, yep. He looks so cute. It's like a crop top. I am so excited. Okay, let's put our stuff in the locker and go in the water. Have you ever seen a more beautiful sinkhole? No. The ones in Florida don't look anything like this. <laughs> so what is a cenote anyways? A cenote is a natural sinkhole that results from the collapse of limestone bedrock. Cenotes can be open, closed, or semi-open, like the one that we're at today. The Yucatan Peninsula is absolutely filled with cenotes and underground river systems. There is no other place in the world with this quantity, over 7,000. And in this video, we will be experiencing just two of them. Cenotes were very significant to the Mayans. They believed they were the entrance to the underworld and a place where gods would visit. Archaeologists have discovered jade, pottery, gold, and incense at the bottom of sacred cenotes, along with human remains, some of which show wounds consistent with human sacrifice. We're biking home! It's been a few hours. We're back in our accommodations here in Tulum. Essentially, we don't have running water. What you doing, babe? Packing. I feel as though like I'm always on the fence about making decisions. And when I finally was like, you know what? I don't care what Airbnb says. Like, I'm willing to take the hit and admit that I made a mistake booking this place and we're leaving. And as soon as I decided, I just felt empowered. I felt so empowered just being able to make the choice and stick to the choice and know like I made this choice. I'm doing it. We're leaving. I hope you guys know I'm so proud of you guys for, for everything you're doing and how hard you're working and you're both so brave for going on this adventure and dealing with all the hardships that come with it and I hope that you can remember when, when hard things happen that good things come from it and that you're learning and growing so much from those difficult things so I'm really proud of you guys. We made it. New place is right there. Let's go check it out. Oh, oh, so much nicer. Oh, wow. With rain clouds rolling in and thunderstorms in the forecast, we decided to push our second cenote to the following day. In the meantime, we thought it would be fun to show you how we handle a simple fact of life while traveling here in Tulum and take you to a place called Bow Laundry. This is a do-it-yourself laundromat as well as a bar and cafe. And for today, this is gonna be my office. Most places in Latin America are full service lavanderias, which means they take your laundry, you drop it off, and then you pick it up later and you get what you get. Sometimes it turns out great, sometimes not so much. And of course, while you're doing your laundry, you get to hang out in a hammock. Laundry is done and I just paid for it. It was 88 pesos, so it's like 450 to have it washed and dried. Yo, what's going on? You're knocking my bike over? Oh, that's your bike. Sorry, next week. Coolest laundry experience of my life. Never been to a bar slash workspace where there's a laundry mat in the back and you can just chill. The 
sunrises here are really something special. This is our new Airbnb. It's our second morning. I'm gonna take you on a quick tour. This is where we've been working. We always seem to turn our kitchen tables into our workspaces. They have these really cool benches that we've been chilling out a little bit. All right here's the bathroom. There's the second half of it with toilet and shower. And then here's the bedroom back here. So essentially what happened with Airbnb was after they reviewed all the photos and everything that we sent them, we did receive some refund. I felt like we needed to receive more because they haven't actually refunded us even the nights that we weren't gonna be in the space. But at some point, we just decided to move on because of how difficult it was dealing with Airbnb's customer service. We're super happy with our new living conditions for the remainder of the Tulum trip. And today we are headed to Cenote number two. <laughs> Line. Whoa, you're dropping pretty far. Did you do it? No. Push it. Did it hurt when you hit the water though? A little. I was trying to get a flip. I definitely know what to do next time. Sheesh, dude. I'm pretty scared. Did you go up there? I just got my ticket. I guess so. I should go after her, eh? Oh boy, this is really scary. When do I let go? When you hit the wall. looking for a beach like this with light sand and turquoise waters and I feel like I'm never disappointed but nothing's ever what it is in my mind except for this beach. The audio in this clip was unfortunately unusable, but what I was trying to say is that I am super grateful to be at the beach, one of my favorite places in the entire world. This is also our second last day in Mexico before flying to a city in the mountains. So it's gonna be quite a while before I see the ocean again. Rain's coming down. We're hustling back to the bikes. We wrapped our gear bag in two beach towels, plus it's rain covers. Ready to roll? It stopped raining for a second, which is great. We're on the road back to the main road. I've got all the important gear that can get ruined by rain. Rolling, 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 rolling. <gasps> Bikes have been returned. We totally got lost and uh, we had a little mishap. Lindsay jacked her foot up. I broke a kickstand, but we made it. We had to take some back roads, some side roads, and roads here are just made of dirt. So we had those cruiser bikes, like they were mountain bikes off-roading, barreling through potholes and puddles. It was actually kind of a good time. Bikes were definitely my favorite part. It just feels good to be like so mobile and to like have control over where you're going, how you're getting there. Just know, you know, like, all right, we're cruising now. We 
We just got home from the beach and returning the bikes. I sit down at my computer to check out what's going on on YouTube, and the first thing that pops up is this video. Tobin's quitting YouTube. He's a good friend of mine, an amazing drummer, and an absolute incredible dude. In the video, he described burnout. Burnout on YouTube, burnout at the drums, loss of creativity, loss of inspiration. It struck me so hard. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been exactly in that position. But then later in the video, he goes on to deliver a custom snare drum, his signature snare drum, to one of his fans with Williams syndrome. Really inspiring video. At the end of the day, we can all do whatever we want to do. There might be reasons why it's hard. You might have excuses. You might not want to do it sometimes. You might be not feeling it. You might have outside voices telling you that you can't do it. It has solidified now. I can do whatever I want to do and I can do it my own way. I can just be myself. Ollie's just being himself, seeing him getting that drum today, it's just, it's just sick in it, like you've just seen it. You just have to keep going at the end of the day, no matter what's in front of you, so go do it.